Before we begin, I'd like to ask my lovely assistant, Adrian, to step forward just for a moment. Adrian, if you'd be so kind, tell me, what are you looking at? A chair. It is a chair. Describe the chair for me. All right, it is a leather chair with metal feet on the chair. Uh huh. That's all you got? Uh, it's uh, stitched together, so probably a uh, couple pieces of fake leather and all right. on a metal chair. All right. Those are Adrian's observations of that chair. I am going to talk for a bit, Adrian. You are going to keep examining this chair. I want you to observe it, and then I'm going to come back to you, and he's going to tell me everything that he's observed about the chair. You've got your assignment. Here we go. The four-step interpretive process. So step number one is observe the text. Step number two, what does the text say to the original audience? Not to you. That doesn't come yet. What does the text say to the original audience? Number three, what is the principle for all time? What's the principle? Number four, how do I apply this text? So these are four words that you want to remember. Get these beaten into your head. So when you go to read a Bible verse, you're confronted with an atheist who wants you to read it. So you think, okay, I've got my four words. I'm going to be able to figure this out. Observation is number one. Observation. Number two is interpretation. Number three is principalization. And number four is application. And we want to proceed in that order. This on the left hand side is the old town. That's the Bible days. We, however, are in the 21st century and things don't look the same. Well, it's because they're not the same. There's a river running between the old town and the new town. How wide is that river? We got to take a 2,000 year old book, even older than that, a 3,400 year old book, and we got to bring it to the 21st century. What's separating us? How wide is the divide? And the answer is you've got time, you've got culture, you've got language, you've got situation, you've got covenant. All of those things could change my understanding of the verse. Step one observe, observe. Observe. Step two, what does it say and what does it mean? In other words, interpretation. Step three, what is the principle? Knowing how wide the river is between the original audience and us. You've got time and culture and language and situation and covenant. It's written on the cartoon for you, but remember those things that divide us. Things are different today. Transportation, economies, our culture, war, peace, language, different language, situation. We're not living in that time. We're not being persecuted. We're not under any sort of captivity or judgment of God. And then you've got covenant going on. Needless to say, this makes a big difference. And then finally, step four, application. Can I apply this verse to me? And if so, how? Observation, interpretation, principalization, application. Let's go through this slowly. Now remember, before we tackle any verse, lose your presuppositions. Remember the purpose of the book. Remember history and culture. Walk a mile in their sandals. Before I read my verse, I should read several paragraphs before my text, several paragraphs afterwards, most problems taken care of. So let's start <coughs> observing a Bible verse. But before we do that, let's check in with Adrian. Tell us what you've observed. <laughs> All right, so this is indeed a metal chair with uh, some fake leather on it. It's seven pieces of leather. They told me it was real leather. <laughs> it's not. So it's got a couple different types of stitching. Uh, on the outside, it has an exterior stitch where you see it. On the inside, they kind of hide the stitch. Huh. Um, it's got four screws connecting a, um, two metal frames on the inside of this. So it's not metal all the way through. It's like two metal frames on the, on the outside. Four screws hold that, six screws here. It looks like one of the screws wasn't put in correctly. But uh, anyway, and then it's got uh, eight black pads on the bottom. It's got this. What's interesting is it doesn't have a typical label that if where you rip it off, all right. you go to jail or something. Yeah, right. But uh, it has black fabric on the very underneath side. And uh, it has two metal bars on the back um, that connected in kind of at this joint. 
and then has a zipper on the back that doesn't actually have a place where you can actually zip it up. What was that, five minutes he had? He learned a lot about the chair, and you're going to learn a lot about your verse if you observe, observe, observe.